Lakers today. What are your sources telling you about how they feel? They're not nervous right now. They're not as nervous as you would think that they would be, that all these names that they could potentially sign if they don't get Kawhi are coming off the board. They are 100% all in on Kawhi. That doesn't mean that they know that they're going to get him, but they didn't create this cap space for a Hail Mary. They were cautiously optimistic that they don't view themselves as sort of this dark horse pick. They, they think that they have a real chance. Now, if they, even if, let's say they get Kawhi Leonard, um, give me some names. I mean, the, the one, uh, like Rondo would come back, right? Rondo would come back. Yeah, Rondo comes back, and I would imagine J.R. Smith. Yeah, and by the way, Colin, like, these are all guys that you've heard of and guys who may be with the team right now. Kyle Korver could be a name. Pau yeah. Gasol, by the way, could finish his career back there. Iggy? 100%. A guy who was, uh, you know, would love to come back and play for a championship. So, again, these, there's this perception that is, if it's veteran minimum guys, it'll be guys off the street, guys who played in the G League. No, these are guys who are looking at the, at the end of their career. They're 35, 36, 37, who want one more chance. Okay, so we know they can afford Rondo. We know J.R. Smith and Corver and Iggy. Could they get a Danny Green, perhaps, who, by the way, can play defense as long and a little hot and cold last year in the playoffs, but he was good when it mattered against the Ye- Warriors. Yes, they got that room exception for almost $5 million that you can get that one really good piece. And by the way, that's sort of like a piece that you would want if you're talking to Kawhi, saying, hey, by the way, this, this is not just a super team. We're going to bring in a guy that you like to play with, a guy that you know. And, uh, and what's really not talked about enough and why the Lakers really like their chances, they got a feeling last year that when Kawhi was talking about wanting to leave San Antonio. He wanted to come to the Lakers, and he wanted to come back home, and he wanted to play in Los Angeles. And so I I don't think enough is being made about that's where he wants to come back. So I I think Toronto is a real viable possibility because of the season that he had. But in his heart of hearts, when he looks at signing a long-term deal, he wants to come back home. Now let's talk about the Clippers, who, by the way, were a 50-win playoff team who beat the Warriors twice. Um, if they don't, if they do land Kawhi, they are certainly capable of. They'll be near the Western Conference favorites and should be right, one hundred percent. Now, if they don't sign Kawhi, where do they go? Because it's still a competent roster. This would be a not a great summer for them, clearly. But their worst case scenario, when you look at what they've done, is you roll back last year's team that won about fifty games, push the Warriors to six games. People kind of like that team again. We thought that that would be a totally new team because they potentially had two max slots that they were going to bring in Kawhi and maybe one more piece. That's not going to happen. Best case scenario is you put Kawhi on that same exact team. Worst case scenario is you roll back that same team with a max slot the next year. Which is not great, but it's, it's not the pay, worst case scenario. Couldn't I just say, listen, I got Patrick Beverly. I could pay Boogie Cousins for one 100%. huge year. Yeah. Boogie, come in. You're our big. We add Boogie Cousins to a great locker room off a 50-win team. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they're not in a bad situation. When you look at, the, at these three teams, the Lakers, despite having two of the top five players, they, they, they will be in the worst position in terms of how do we fill out this team without Kawhi? Because with Kawhi, you don't have a problem filling out the team with guys who are on veteran minimum deals. Right. If they don't get Kawhi, they got $32 million and really no one to spend that on. You know? So again, you, you, it's going to be very similar to last season where it was you get LeBron James and everyone's excited, but then you follow that up with Rondo and Michael Beasley and JaVale McGee and just a bunch of players that you're on like one-year deals. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't even know what the Lakers would do if they didn't get Kawhi at this point. I guess you'd sign Danny Green. I mean, again, it, wh- wh- how would you divvy up the money? You don't want long-term deals. You don't need Boogie, no. but I think you may go after Boogie. I think at I, that point, you, you may go after guys that you wouldn't normally go after to kind of put together a one year. Yeah, Anthony Davis liked Boogie Cousins. So yeah. you have Boogie at the five, Anthony four, LeBron three, Kuzma three off the bench. Exactly. And Kuzma, as you touched on, is, is not really talked about. I think he, he's a guy who could get 20 points per game. A fantastic number three possibility if they don't get Kawhi. But again, they're so in on Kawhi. It, it, they, they created that max slot for Kawhi. There was this feeling that they created a max slot for a max player. No, they created that max slot for one player, and that's Kawhi. You interviewed Anthony Davis um, for the LA Times. It was published this morning. Take your time on this. What did you learn about Anthony? 
how much that he wanted to team up with LeBron. You know, I, I kind of forgot how young he was. He said he grew up with LeBron. So the way that maybe some kids look at Jordan, he looked at LeBron. And that was a guy that he looked up to and he respected so much. And so the fact that not only he's going to play with LeBron, but that LeBron gifted him his number 23 meant so much to him. And uh, I talked to him about that four million trade kicker. He said, it's about my legacy. I want to win championships. I want to win titles. And so... That goes back to my point. He didn't just do that to sign a couple of shooters. I mean, I think he really did that because he's going to recruit and want to bring in a Kawhi. So him and LeBron are going to try to recruit Kawhi here. His, uh, you sat down with him. His, um, the knock I always heard on AD was he wasn't a real alpha. He's very chill. I don't, by the way, think that's a terrible deal with LeBron. I actually think quiet. Kawhi and chill AD, I actually think those are great fits with LeBron. So do you, did you feel, not that he's passive, but he's very laid back. Yeah, he, he actually said that. He said, I love Los Angeles because it's more slow motion. I said, slow motion, where he lives, it's very slow motion. So I, mean, I think he's more of a, I'm going to take it easy. He's, he's excited about doing some of these, um, these um, Hollywood projects, but that's not really him. He's more Kawhi than LeBron. He's very take it easy, slow motion. Um, what did you make? Let me ask you now off the Lakers and Clippers, and I know those teams, uh, you primarily, uh, you know, you're close to the proximity. You're five minutes away at the LA Times. The Warriors signed D'Angelo Russell, and my takeaway was it's not a long-term no. deal. It's like let us get an all-star and move him at the trading deadline. That's what it felt like to me. 100%. This is a short-term fit because he doesn't fit if Steph and Clay come back and they're healthy. Like he doesn't fit. But they got a piece that teams around the league would want. So at least they got something in return that whether it's at the trade deadline or next summer, they can flip for something. Because remember, uh, what, Joy, what, the trade deadline is, is it early February? Because they say Clay Thompson's going to come back in late February, early March. So if you get a lot out of D'Angelo Russell, and by the way, Steph February Curry. February 7th. Okay, so February 7th. Let's say the 27th, Clay comes back. So your takeaway is here, February 7th, you get a week off NBA, right? So you have to go about six games, 12 days, 15 days without Clay Thompson or yeah. D'Angelo Russell if you trade him. But my takeaway on this is Steph Curry works with everybody. Yeah. And what they're what you're going to see is D'Angelo Russell. We don't know where these rumors came from. He's the best guy, <laughs> and they're going to sell him and bake him up, and then send send that those baked goods off yeah. for a big. This was not a, a, a long term fit. My my guess is as he's going to be there for the duration of the season, just because you don't know how long it's going to take Clay to come back. But if he has the season that they're hoping he does, and he hopes that he does, you're going to get a lot for him. Yeah. You know, an interesting piece. Lakers don't need him because they need shooters. Kayvon Looney could be available to somebody. Yeah. And the Warriors love him, but now can't afford him. That's an interesting piece. Exactly. The moment, whether it's today, Tuesday, Wednesday, July 4th, as we kind of have to find out, that's when they kind of flip. But Colin, I got to be honest. I mean, they are quietly confident. No, they are not stressed about these other names coming off the board. Now, that, 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 that does not mean that Kawhi might not call them and say, sorry, I'm going to go back to Toronto. I'm going to go to the Clippers. But they're not nervous right now, which I was, I was surprised about. I was like, hey, by the way, like, a lot of these names that were your plan B, plan C, plan D, those plans are gone. Like they, they actually did have a yeah. plan B, C, D. And, so but Curry's in Dallas It's now. all gone now. It's all Kawhi. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.